ACCPM. Blake Kenson's going to join us here momentarily in case you were absolutely hiding under a rock. Here's what he did. He and his teammates, they go to Cameron Indoor, win for the first time since 1979. Blake had 24. Look at that little graphic on the right. Seven for seven beyond the arc. Tied for the most three points and uh, without missing a shot in ACC basketball history. And with that said, we head up to Pittsburgh, PA. Blake Kenson now joins us live right here on the program. Blake, first of all, good seeing you again. Hadn't seen you since the tip-off days here down in Charlotte. But, uh, man, that return trip to uh, the great state of North Carolina, you and the boys put on some kind of show Saturday night. Congrats on the big win. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I know it has not been the uh, most perfect start. You guys have been struggling a little bit. Uh, what did you get a vibe before you went down to Duke that guess what? We're getting ready to turn this thing around right now. What, what, what happened with this team going to Cameron? Uh, we just, we're still learning how to put 40 minutes together as a, as, a, as an entire unit. And, um, we, I think that was our first time doing it that night. And as far as conference play goes and that's, and that's good to see, that's good to feel. And we're going to carry that on because we know what to do now moving forward as far as how hard we need to. You talk, we talk all the time about having a hot hand and with the, you know, basketball looks like a bat, you know, or the, the rim looks like it's a giant basket you can throw it into. What's going through your head as you're draining seven straight three-pointers? I honestly always feel this way. I mean, it's, it's my job. I come into these games expecting to make a lot of threes. So um, there's nothing, anything out of the norm, out of particular going through my head while I'm making shots. I'm just, I know I'm prepared for this. I know this is what I trained to do, and it's, and it's happening. You know, uh, while you were perfect from beyond the arc, there were some other clutch threes, right? I mean, your teammates really stepped up in the game, and I just thought it was just a gutty effort because you knew Duke was going to make a run. It's never easy at Cameron, as you guys well know. Everybody knows. But, man, your, your teammates really stepped up to the challenge, didn't they? Yeah, and that's what it takes. That's what it takes to win – any game in this league, everybody's stiff competition, and um, everybody has a unit, the bench, and um, even the other in my st other starters play well all the way through. And this is not you, you, you can't look at it and be like, oh, I play so good, that's gonna be the best I play. No, that's the exact level you need to play at every single game, um, including myself to win these games because this competition is stiff. You, you uh, Packer and I were talking before you came on that, that the photo of you on the table there is one of the genuinely great sports photos I've seen in a long time. Take me through the mindset that went into jumping up on the table and giving a little something back to the student section there. And how many times have you seen the picture since then? Uh, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it quite a bit. And um, it was just something in the moment. Um, you know, they started out they, in warm-ups. They started out talking actually kind of friendly and um, <laughs> kind of just saying, hey, or whatever. And I told my teammates, like, I don't enjoy being liked by the other team. <laughs> and progressively, they hate it worse and worse throughout the game. I don't think you have to worry about them liking you too much any, anymore. I think, I think you got their number now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, by the way, when did you decide? Was that, I mean, you didn't give that any thought beforehand hey when we're gonna win this game i'm going to the top of the mountain as you called it i mean at what a point in time did you say listen i'm walking right over there i don't get i don't hear about any security guy i'm gonna go stand on top of that table and talk about everybody i mean when, when did that hit you i think i think after i hit the free throw and i and i i missed the second one on the way back and i looked at the clock and i realized they're not gonna have enough time to even make this any more of a game i probably made it up in my head about that what your your coach is somebody who's familiar with that building. Was he? Uh, what was his uh, reaction to your your grand send off to the Duke student section? He wasn't excited. I mean, <laughs> he wasn't excited. You know, he that's him. He's, he apologizes right there in his ear, like I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> oh no! Now he goes and gets me. Okay, <laughs> he comes back though. He Back and I'm and I'm apologizing right there, and he's telling me that was not necessary. <laughs> so, but it's okay though. I mean, shoot, it happens in the spirit of sport. He understands what type of person I am, and um, he didn't condone it. He still doesn't condone it. But you know, we're moving past it. It is what it is.
Well, I'm a firm believer you ask for forgiveness instead of permission. So I'm, I'm all with you. I think, I think it was great. <laughs> By the way, what was the locker room like, Blake, for you guys? Oh, the party. We party after we win. We got the music jumping. We don't sit down after we win. And we party. It was, it was, a, it was a turn up. We did. I mean, that's how we treat every win. So the locker room was aesthetic. And that, fl- and that flight home had to take about six seconds, right? I mean, that, that's got to be one of those uh, – that's what it's all about. I mean, you're with your team. You go on the road. You do something that hasn't been done since 1979. By the way, do you know that going into the game? How long had it been since Pitt won a game there? I did not know that. I did not know that. I did not know that. But um, after hearing it after the game, it brought a smile to my face. And just like I told the, um, our radio team, this program has done so many special things for my life and my family. So, like, doing special things like that in return is, like, is what I came back to do. So I'm glad I got to do it, but I, I want to do more. Well, Pac and I were just talking about the idea of momentum and how much things can carry over. And I, I know this was not the start to ACC season that Pitt and you wanted. How much can a game like this mean in terms of changing the, the direction of a season big picture? Any win can change the trajectory of a season where you didn't win, um, you had a losing record to begin with. But um, listen... It doesn't matter who it is. If when you dominate and play well, and, and any who, no matter who you play, we could have played the local middle school team. That is what you need to see when you um, are looking for a win. So that was a good win, and we're gonna you know kind of lean on that performance and try to remind ourselves this is what we're capable of moving forward. Now we look at the schedule. You're on the road this week at Georgia Tech at Miami. Uh, how quickly do you put the Duke game rearview mirror and what you've been looking at at Georgia Tech already? It's in the past. We flew straight to Atlanta after we left in North Carolina. We haven't been back to Pittsburgh, so um, we've we've already we're already on Georgia Tech. Uh, this is our second day in Atlanta, and we're laser focused. This is a two part trip. Um, we we got the, we got part one done. And now we're getting part. We're fixing on doing part two. What's uh? You, it's a shame you haven't been back to Pittsburgh yet. So what kind of feedback did you get? Have you heard from you know friends on campus, the folks around Pittsburgh? I assume your social media was pretty popular in the aftermath of this one. What was the response back home? Even though you haven't been there yet. Um, just I mean a lot of a lot of, a lot of support. Obviously, a lot of people who enjoyed the moment. Um, fun fact though, I've gotten. This is the most I've ever heard from North Carolina fans. They really <laughs> <enjoy it. laughs> yeah, you, they're gonna love you for a while, right up until you can give one, you, until you climb on the scorers table uh, in uh, Chapel Hill too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys have had success in Chapel Hill. It, it's kind of crazy that 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 North Carolina Duke thing on the road has been pretty pretty good for Pittsburgh. I mean, I know '79 was a long time, but given the fact what you did the last time you walked in there and and you guys have been a thorn in North Carolina's side for a while. Yeah, well, I mean, they it, I think I believe in media day, they said we're the team they want to beat the most. So um, I love that. I love that type of energy. And I'm going to we're going to meet the bell. We're going to ring the bell from that from that type of request. Well, congratulations on the performance and the win. I know you like mentioned Georgia Tech and Miami this week on the road. Uh, it is a grind in the ACC, but uh, you gave a lot of folks a reason to talk about that uh, that that snapshot. Like you said, that was one of the all timers. There's no doubt about that. And seven for seven beyond the arc. It's only been done one other time in the league. Pretty impressive from a historical perspective. Keep up the great work, Blake. All right, thank you guys. See y'all later. You got it, man. Take care of yourself. Stay healthy.